we may go over the target, but we're not quite hitting the granny shot criteria yet. That said, I believe PayPal is currently undervalued, and Tomler has backed my thesis on the stock. He was particularly impressed with the long-term potential, although PayPal isn't in the portfolio right now. What is in the portfolio? The top performing stock has been Meta, which may surprise some people. Many are questioning whether Meta can continue its growth, but right now it's the number one stock in the portfolio. Each of the top holdings, including Meta, makes up around 3% of the total portfolio. Meta meets all the criteria for long-term growth. The company still has significant room to grow, especially with the potential of AI. Meta has yet to fully tap into the possibilities of AI, so there's still a lot of upside. Investors are optimistic about Mark Zuckerberg's commitment to AI, which could also support his vision of the metaverse. Advances in AI, especially the powerful GPUs from companies like NVIDIA, could play a crucial role in Meta's future success. They've already secured a significant amount of these cutting-edge GPUs, positioning themselves for growth. For the next 6 to 12 months, we're evaluating stocks based on specific criteria and positions may be sold if they no longer meet the standards. This isn't investment advice, and you can buy the stocks mentioned e.g. GRNY through platforms like Fidelity, Charles Schwab, Interactive Brokers, or E-Trade. The strategy involves style tilts where the portfolio is exposed to factors that could offer higher expected returns in the short term. This includes trends like interest rate cuts, seasonality, and cycle patterns. The number one stock, the weighting is three and a quarter percent. You want to just talk about the move in, in that stock this week and, and what it means to you in, in context of, of how you built this and where you think it can go? Yes, um, Tesla has, in our research product, had been appearing um, since inception, since 2019, because uh, that company has a hidden asset, which is, is its AI and intellectual property. And now, of course, the intellectual property built around the, all this infrastructure they own. So it's a company that, to us, looks undervalued because people look at it as a, a car maker or, and look at, at current margins and earnings. But as we know, there's a lot of new initiatives, whether it's robotaxi and, you know, robots. And, uh, and now, of course, there is a political angle that you guys well discussed. And I, I think mm -hmm. it can... Currently, 21 stocks align with a specific style tilt, while 31 stocks are part of a broader thematic trend. One important factor to consider is seasonality, which refers to industries or groups of stocks that tend to follow recurring performance patterns during certain times of the year. We've discussed this concept before, particularly with sectors like uranium, nuclear energy, and other cyclical industries. For example, when there's a high demand for uranium, especially when domestic production in the US, is low utilities will need to import it, which drives up prices. As a result, uranium companies ramp up production to meet this demand, leading to a boom and bust cycle. The same seasonal dynamics are also seen in the nuclear energy sector and with AI-related companies. Companies like Google, Garmin GRMN and Caterpillar Cat are benefiting from these trends. Garmin, for instance, has performed well since 2022, while Google has seen gains driven by the AI boom over the past 6 to 12 months. Caterpillar is a bit different its position to capitalize on infrastructure projects, from road construction to new nuclear plants, as the demand for rebuilding and expansion grows in sectors like energy and infrastructure. So seasonality plays a key role in these industries, with specific cycles affecting stock performance. Whether it's the demand for uranium, the rise of AI technologies, or large-scale infrastructure projects, these trends offer investors important clues about where opportunities may lie. Here's a revised version of your text. Currently, 21 stocks align with a specific style tilt, while 31 stocks are part of a broader thematic trend. One important factor to consider is seasonality, which refers to industries or groups of stocks that tend to follow recurring performance patterns during certain times of the year. We've discussed this concept before, particularly with sectors like uranium, nuclear energy, and other cyclical industries. For example, when there's a high demand for uranium, especially when domestic production in the US is low utilities will need to import it, which drives up prices. As a result, uranium companies ramp up production to meet this demand, leading to a boom and bust cycle. The same seasonal dynamics are also seen in the nuclear energy sector and with AI-related companies. Companies like Google, Garmin GRMN and Caterpillar Cat are benefiting from these trends. Garmin, for instance, has performed well since 2022, while Google has seen gains driven by the AI boom over the past 6 to 12 months.
Caterpillar is a bit different its position to capitalize on infrastructure projects, from road construction to new nuclear plants, as the demand for rebuilding and expansion grows in sectors like energy and infrastructure. So, seasonality plays a key role in these industries, with specific cycles affecting stock performance. Whether it's the demand for uranium, the rise of AI technologies, or large-scale infrastructure projects, these trends offer investors important clues about where opportunities may lie. On the 250th anniversary of our nation's independence, there's growing hope that the resources once allocated to military conflicts will be redirected into strengthening our economy. This shift could spark a revitalization not seen since the post-war economic boom of the 1940s and 50s, presenting a unique opportunity for growth across various sectors. Companies that have long been undervalued but are now showing signs of recovery could be positioned for a resurgence. A key metric to watch during this recovery is the Purchasing Managers Index PMI, a monthly economic indicator based on surveys of private sector companies in manufacturing and services. The PMI tracks factors such as new orders, production, employment, supplier deliveries, and inventories. After years of supply chain disruptions, the PMI is starting to show positive signals across certain sectors, suggesting that stocks in these industries could see significant growth. Among the 28 stocks aligning with this theme of recovery, 13 are included in the portfolio I've been monitoring. One example is Walgreens, which is currently trading at valuation levels not seen since the mid-1990s. If the company can improve its margins, it could become a strong long-term performer. In addition to retail, sectors like energy and cybersecurity also show promise. While many cybersecurity stocks have struggled to maintain momentum, some leading players in the space are still well positioned for growth. There are also a few overlooked sleepers in the sector that could surprise investors as they capitalize on emerging trends and technologies. While risks remain, the overall investment climate is shifting and these sectors could see significant gains as the economic recovery takes hold. Investors who stay attuned to these developments could find substantial opportunities in the months and years ahead. These stocks aren't currently in the portfolio, but some have been performing exceptionally well. For instance, a has been a sleeper pick up 46% today. MicroStrategy has also seen strong gains. Palantir, meanwhile, surged more than 20% following earnings and has added another 5 to 10% in the past few days. This is the list as it stands today. Keep in mind, some of these are still new positions, so there might be some volatility and pullbacks, especially after big moves. Stocks in the finance sector could also be impacted by today's Fed decision, where Jerome Powell announced a 25 basis point rate cut. As for the portfolio, Meta is the top performer. Many of you know I did a lot of deep research before investing in Meta, and I believe that's why Tom follows my analysis. He probably saw my post about buying it at $88, right at the bottom. I got lucky, but I also put together a solid thesis, which he appreciated, especially my PayPal write-up. Looking ahead, we're focusing on companies in energy and cybersecurity, particularly those with strong long-term potential. Energy, in particular, is a sector that requires significant investment, and while nuclear energy isn't on the table right now, I see strong opportunities in US. Oil refining and other energy-related areas. It's a long-term play, but I'm optimistic about the outlook. Cybersecurity is a major focus right now, with more and more companies and the US government investing heavily in this space. For example, Palantir just secured a deal worth hundreds of millions, possibly even a billion dollars, with the US Navy. This highlights how important and long-term the cybersecurity trend is, and it's starting to show up in ETFs exchange traded funds that target this theme. Another big trend to watch is millennials. As a millennial myself, this is particularly interesting. Millennials are projected to inherit around $68 trillion in wealth over the next few decades, which will dramatically shift how money is spent and invested. This wealth transfer is already being tracked by ETFs that focus on companies poised to benefit from the millennial generation. Right now, there are 11 stocks that fit the bill. This made me wonder, could PayPal be one of those stocks? PayPal, which owns Venmo, a platform widely used by millennials, could definitely be part of this trend. While I'm not suggesting PayPal is a lock for these ETFs, it aligns with a lot of the criteria. Beyond Venmo, PayPal also has a strong position in cybersecurity with its patents and a significant international footprint, including in China. So, it could very well be a key player in both cybersecurity and the millennial wealth transfer. 
There seems to be a potential intersection between PMI recovery, seasonal trends, and the current environment with interest rates dropping. I think this could align with a lot of the ongoing shifts, so I'll be keeping an eye on developments especially to see if companies like PayPal get added, since it's still trading at 2017 valuations. Historically, since 1973, the global surplus of labour has been steadily decreasing. We're starting to see similarities with the 1970s, especially with the energy crisis. One notable trend is the revival of nuclear energy, particularly through small modular reactors, which is partly driven by the growing demand for AI. With certain industries experiencing labour shortages like nuclear engineering, aircraft maintenance and air traffic control, there's a growing need to import skilled workers from places like Japan and Korea. In my area, for example, we're seeing a lot of younger workers from those countries filling these critical roles. Many pilots are now being trained for free by major companies, with the understanding that they will sign contracts to work for these companies afterward. This approach helps address labour shortages in specific sectors, allowing companies to import talent where there is insufficient local labour. As a result, some companies are seeing growth, with stocks benefiting from this trend. The final point here is the easing of financial conditions. Recently we've seen interest rates being cut, which has already had an impact on stocks, though the reaction has been mixed. For example, some fintech stocks like PayPal are relatively flat today, while others, like Shopify, are showing growth. Robinhood had a significant spike of 20% yesterday. These movements suggest that the market has already priced in some of the potential effects, but the full impact is still unfolding. For PayPal, my long-term thesis is that as interest rates decrease, it will benefit the company, along with other fintech stocks like SoFi. This could attract institutional investors back to PayPal, which hasn't seen as much institutional interest during its recent downturn. When it comes to investing, one fund's criteria are noteworthy it allocates at least 80% of its assets to large cap stocks, meaning companies with a market cap of $10 billion or more. The fund uses a comprehensive approach to select stocks, combining both fundamental and quantitative analysis. The fund looks for broad research themes, identifies companies within those themes, and then screens them for potential based on these factors.